Hey guys, it's Kevin in my review for Raya and the Last Dragon. What Raya and the Last Dragon sent you about is we center on the fictional location of Kumandra, which basically was a place in which human and dragons were able to coexist, everything went great, until one day this monster known as the Droon appeared and threatened the land and... All of the humans end up surviving, but the dragons unfortunately ended up sacrificing themselves, and since then, Kumandra has turned into a bit of an apocalyptic uh, wasteland, and years later, we focus on Raya as an adult, and she is trying to do what she can to try to restore uh, Kumandra, and, you know, to restore Kumandra to what it once was, and also stop the Druun for good, but also trying to make some previous amends that may have caused uh, this situation to be worsened. So Riot and the Last Dragon, I was very excited uh, for this film. I mean, anytime a Disney animated film comes out, I'm mostly on board. Uh, most of the time, they turn out to be really great. And this one especially, it seemed like something really different. You know, it seemed like something we don't normally get. Um in terms of a Disney animation, and that made me very increasingly excited to see what this film was really going to turn out like. There was a lot of possibilities for how this could turn out, uh, and I went into it not really knowing a lot, though. Like, even watching the trailers, I didn't really know a lot of what this movie was going to be, and so I finally did see it, which, can I just say, was amazing to get to see a Disney film in theaters. Um, but I did, in fact, get to see it, and this film blew me away. Ryan the Last Dragon is easily, I think, one of Disney's best original films in years. It's very different from what you're expecting, but in the best way possible. And we're just going to try now, starting off with the voice cast... And I will say right now, in terms of uh, this film, one of the best elements of it absolutely is the voice cast here. I think everyone really does do a fantastic job. But let's first talk about Kelly Marie Tran, who plays the title character of Raya, and does it to perfection, I must say. I feel like Tran is an actress that really hasn't been able to showcase her full talents yet. You know, obviously, she's most known for being Rose in Star Wars and also retroactively getting shut out of that franchise entirely. Um, so you know, her doing something like this uh, had me very excited, and she really kills it in this role. Raya is someone that is very determined. You can see that she's someone that wants to be this hero. She wants to restore peace. She has this faith in her that a lot of characters just don't, and it radiates throughout the entire um, film, and I think Tran just does such a great job, and, you know, Tran's, um, Tran's performance really does... Uh, heighten Raya's likability as a character, and I really like what she ended up doing here. She was fun, she was funny, she was badass, and just all around what you want in a great lead for this film. And overall, I think Tran really demonstrated that she does have a real future, I think, as a voice actress. Between this and The Crude's A New Age, I really do think this is where she shines. I really do want to see her do more voice work. I think she does a really great job. She's a great actress regardless, but voice work, I think, really is where her strong suit is, and I really hope she continues to take roles like this on, because she definitely knows what she's doing, and I, I really like what she ended up doing in this film. And then Aquafina, who plays Sisu, uh, a much different role than I was expecting. Yes, this is definitely the comedic relief at points. Sisu's a character that, you know, um, because of the fact that she is the last dragon that's been left, all of the powers that her uh, siblings had, you know, all the other dragons, like, she, um, ex she exhumes them in some way, she gets to showcase all these different abilities, and that really does play into the comedy of her character, but also, Aquafina does a great job in giving this character actual layers, and I really did like seeing that. The bond between Sisu and Raya is very strong. It's one of the most important parts of the entire movie, and they really do a great job, I think, at really solidifying just how important that bond really is, and I think Aquafina was just perfectly cast her overall. I was very impressed by what she ended up doing in this film.
As far as the rest of the cast goes, I think everyone does a really great job. Gemma Chan gives one of the best performances I've seen from a Disney villain in quite some time. Namari is very terrifying at points um, because she is a real drive as a character. There's a real motivation for her for what she's doing, you know, why she's doing what she's doing, and Chan just kills it in this role. She's really someone that you detest at points, but you also understand, you know, her motivation, and I think Chan plays that so well here. Isaac Wang, I thought, did a really good job as a character of Boone. He is this 10-year-old that he's also kind of, like, on his own. He's developed this, like, shrimp business, and he is such a fun character. Wang does such a great job here. Benedict Wan, I thought, did a great job in this film. Sandra Oh. Um, Alan Tudyk, even, as Tuck Tuck. I mean, these are the roles that Tudyk does such a great job with in Disney, are these, you know, silent animal type characters, and he is is just delightful in this role. Really, this entire voice cast, everyone really does kill it. I don't think there's a weak link within the entire cast, and that's definitely the thing that really elevates this film for me. But now let's get to the directing and the writing, because that is the other thing I really do have to commend when it comes to this film. I mean, looking at the directors, they're not what you would expect to be for a Disney animated film. Like, yes, Don Hall has done um, Disney-related stuff before. He, you know, he's done some stuff for uh, Frozen 2, Ralph Breaks the Internet. He's done some storyboards here and there. Um, but he hasn't, and he did the screenplay for Meet the Robinsons, as well as uh, Tarzan and Moana. Um, but this is really the first time he's directed something, and he does a really good job with that. And then you couple that with someone like Carlos Lopez Estrada, you know, the director of Blind Spotting, not someone I would ever expect to direct a Disney animated film, and it really goes hand in hand, because while Hall does a really good job of representing the whimsical and fun side of this movie, Estrada is responsible for the more mature tone of this film. In fact, I would go to say this is probably one of Disney's darkest films they've ever made, and it's mainly because the way Estrada goes about it. They take this material very seriously. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot of funny moments throughout this movie, but when it comes to the darker side of this film, it really does go for it, and I think it's, again, because of how well both of these directors really work together in tandem, both finding things that will appeal to kids, but also appeal to adults, and I think the directing is just spot on in that way, and I was very impressed by what they end up doing here, and I don't know if Estrada has a future in animation, but he really does prove with this film he's a very versatile director. He really can take on anything at this point, and I'm really excited to see what he ends up doing next, because again, I, I would have never expected him to be involved with something like this, but he is, and he really does do a great job with it, and I really loved his directing in this film. Definitely, I think, some of the most unique directing I've seen in a film in quite some time. I mean, the best way to sum this up is that it's both this very whimsical, it's both this very, like, fantastical adventure, but it also, at points, feels like a, you know, like, MMA film. There's a lot of combat in this movie, and I think the directing here, it's just, it's done in a really um, impressive manner, and I, I really like what he ended up doing here. But the writing in this film, that's the other thing that really does um, impress me when it comes to this movie, because the screenplay to this film is very complex. I will say that right off the bat. There's a lot you don't know going into this movie, and I really do love how much they were able to hide, because yes, Kumandra you know, the, the crisis that happened, it did happen, but there's a little bit more going on there, and the way the film really takes its time in telling this story and getting you to understand why this is such a big deal, I was very impressed with. I was not expecting them to go to the places that they did with this movie, but it, it really does feel earned because of it, you know, and we get to see how this whole thing came about and how the situation worsened, it's really well done. And it's mainly because this isn't just a, you know, due to the dr the drone. There's a little bit more going on there involving our human characters and this conflict. And it gets you to care that much more about the situation, especially when it comes to the friction between Raya and Namari. This is not just a playful rivalry. It's not like Namari stole something that was, you know, that 
stole something that was important to uh, Raya, there's a little bit more going on there. You know, Namari's responsible for a lot of serious shits, and uh, you can see why Raya is so resentful towards her and has that hatred towards her throughout the movie. You can really see what drives her there, and... I think they did a really great job with that overall. You know, I was, again, I wasn't expecting them to do what they did, but it's the reason why Namari, I think, is such a well-written character, because you do understand her motivations. You're not condoning what she's doing at any point throughout the movie, but you do understand where she's coming from. You understand why, to her, this is the way she needs to go about what she's doing, and I, I think they did a really great job with that, but really all the characters in this movie, they feel very fleshed out. You know, they're not just one-note characters. Sisu, for example, this is not just the comedic dragon sidekick. Like, yes, she definitely starts out that way, but there's a bit more to her than that. She's going through her own sort of personal tragedy as well, and you really do get to dive deep into her character, and also something that makes her and Raya very similar. There is a very... There, there's definitely a lot of similarities to these two characters, and you can understand why they really do need each other in that scenario, and I think that's something else that the film dives into very well here. All of these characters, you know, the specific situation that they're going through, it's really well fleshed out, more than you really would expect it to be, and that's something I really appreciate about this movie. Every single character here, they have some kind of goal. They've all lost something, and they're all dealing with it in different ways, and and I really liked getting to see us actually diving into their plight. You know, this isn't one of those things where they'll just bring it up once. Like, no, there is something that is eating away at these characters throughout the entire movie. And that's something that I was really impressed by them doing. And it's, it's one of the reasons why, like I said, I think this is probably one of the more adult Disney films we've had in quite a bit. Because... It's there's some legitimately serious consequences that are going on here, and it's it's really dark stuff, but I really love just how much this film ended up going for it. And the way all these characters end up coming together as well, I mean, you just really love getting to see that because it's one of those things where they're all going through separate plights, like I said. Um, but the way they all end up working together, they have really good camaraderie, and you really find yourself getting attached to this team. There's one scene especially where they're all talking about what they've lost, and I found myself legitimately getting kind of emotional. I was like, I really couldn't believe that Disney was going to, you know, was, was going to it as deep as they really did, but they really went for it, and I, I think it really worked in this film. I, I think that's something they did a really good job with, but I also should note, this film is a lot of fun. There's a lot of really funny moments throughout this movie, some of which you've seen in the trailer, and some of which you have not. The character of Boone, for example, again, this is just a kid that has started this whole shrimp business, and you think that's gonna get old after a while, but it doesn't, and it's because because of the fact that they find ways to get you to still like his character. Sisu, also, there's this running gag where she finds a way to have all of the powers that her previous, you know, siblings did, because all the other dragons have died out, and Sisu is the only one that's left alive, and the cool thing is they do something different with it every single time, so they find ways to keep you entertained. I think you will be just as entertained as you are riveted by this story, and I think that's something they did a really great job with overall, and again, the way they really dive deep into that conflict and what really is driving everyone, I think is so well done here, but the animation in this film as well, I mean, it's Disney, so you expect it to be really good, but seriously, the world building building especially it is so well done in this movie and that's something that I, I really did end up appreciating. I love the way this film looks, especially the post-apocalyptic look of it. Uh, it looks very realistic and Disney's been doing this a lot recently where you almost forget at times you're watching an animated movie because these locations look so vividly real you know you feel like you can just like reach out and touch it and that's very sim that's very much what kumandra feels like in this movie this feels like a real place you know you you don't want to be there obviously because it's not you know it, it's it's anything but like a welcoming sort of you know look but 
it, it definitely is one of those things that looks very tangible. And I, I think, you know, it, they do a really good job with that in terms of the animation here. There's some different styles of animation they use as well, and that's something else I really like. Something worth noting as well, there is actual action to this movie. It's not just like, you know, these quick little fight scenes. No, they really do go all out when it comes to the fight scenes in this movie. In fact, I would go as far as to say this film is an action movie um, because there is a lot of hand-to-hand -hand combat and I loved it. I loved the way the film really went for it in that way. Uh, you can really tell they tried to be, they, they really tried to pay tribute to say like MMA fighting films and things like that. And I really loved it a lot, especially scenes with Raya and Namari. Again, you really do understand the hatred that these two have for each other and just seeing them go at it. I mean, I was just so locked in to what they were doing and they, they did such a great job with that overall. So I, I really do love the animation in this film. The score as well here by James Noon Howard is a real work of art and you really are reminded to just how great of a composer he really is because he finds a way to really do something different with this movie. It's not your typical Disney score. It has a very specific feel to it that feels more like something you'd hear in, say, like Game of Thrones or some sort of medieval epic, and it really, really fits this movie very well, and I, I enjoyed it a lot. I've been listening to the score a lot since I saw the movie, and I just think his score is... Definitely one of the most unique we've had in a Disney film in a while, and I, I really did love it uh, quite a bit. And the editing to this film, this film is almost two hours long, and it really doesn't feel like it. I found myself so invested in everything that was going on, and I think this film needed to be as long as it was, because you really needed to get to see this conflict, um, you know, to its fullest potential. I mean, the stuff we're dealing with in this movie, like I said, there are some very hard-hitting topics. This film talks about a lot of stuff, like say, abandonment, uh, regret, loss even, but the big theme of this movie really is about unity, and I feel like it's something that we can all get behind, especially during these times. I feel like that's a message that we really do need to hear about, and the film doesn't really shove it down your throat. I've seen some people say that. I didn't really feel that way at all. I felt like they did a really good job at really getting the point across of what they're trying to do with this story, what they're really trying to tell, and I thought it really did work here, and overall, I really did enjoy, you know, the way the film ended. I was pretty shocked with some of the places it ended up going, but the way the movie wrapped up, I thought was pretty perfect, and really did, you know, was, um, honestly kind of perfect, and I thought really did sum up, uh, what the film was trying to get across, Again, I'm really loving this movie a lot. There's a lot of things that really do work for me. Is there anything that really does bring it down? Well, I will say, if I did have to have one flaw with this movie, there is a lot of exposition. There is. And it's needed most of the time. I do think a lot of this exposition is very much needed. But I will say there are times where it can feel a bit overwhelming, especially the first, like, 10 minutes or so. There's a lot of information you're given. And it's one of those things where you kind of wish you can just, like, go back and rewind it just so you can kind of process everything. And I think for the most part, they did a good job of laying out this information in a way that works. But I won't lie, it did take me a little while to fully understand every single thing that's going on. And I do think for some people, that might take them out of the movie. It didn't necessarily take me out of the film, but I do think there were some things that they could have maybe... Um, just scaled back on a bit in terms of the exposition. I just think at times it gets a little too overwhelming, and there are some characters that maybe could have had a bit more fleshed out to them. Namari does have a mother here that is very controlling, and we don't really get to see a lot of that, but overall, this film is just so unique and refreshing that I really can't help but praise it. The animation here is absolutely gorgeous. The story that they're telling here is one that is unlike most Disney films. It goes to some truly dark places that I really wasn't expecting. It has some really great directing here from Don Hall and Carlos Lopez Estrada, who I really do hope get to work on more Disney films. It's got a stellar voice cast behind it, and overall, is just another great reminder of what Disney can really do when they are working to their fullest potential. It's without a doubt one of the best Disney films I have seen in quite some time, and I am going to give Raya and The Last Dragon overall an A.
Also, can I just say, it was great to see this film um, in theaters. I feel like this is a film that is very much made for it, and even though I know you have that option of getting to watch it on Disney Plus for $30, I really do encourage you to try to see this in theaters if you can. I feel like this is a film that is really elevated by that experience, and I think overall you're just going to have a really great time with it. But overall, guys, in my review of Ryan the Last Dragon, the most guys saw this movie, all of your thoughts, and I'll see you guys in my next video, and I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye. Moving on.